Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. So today we are going to talk about polymer manufacturing. Yes, many people have personally requested me over mail to talk about more about the polymer industry, about the refinery industry. So we are going to bring about some refinery industry topics as well as some core industrial manufacturing units like polymer manufacturing. We have had videos on cement manufacturing, on detergent manufacturing, on sulfuric acid manufacturing. And uh, today we are up with another video on polymer manufacturing. We have uh, other request videos as well that are piled up. Uh, we are going to make a video soon on distillation columns uh, because many people have personally requested me about that as well. So just bear with us and wait for uh, one or two weeks because I have a few videos piled up. Uh, today, uh, however, our topic is polymer manufacturing manufacturing unit and I'm going to discuss about the generalistic procedure for polymer manufacturing. There are individualistic features of particular manufacturing procedures. For example, uh, in case of uh, um, polyvinyl chloride, the process will slightly vary than in the uh, case of uh, HDP that is high density polyethylene and low density polyethylene. Uh, so my um, uh, training was also in Aldia Petrochemicals, uh, which was a polymer manufacturing unit. It is a petrochemical industry. So basically a monomer to a polymer. In our day to day life, we know that polymer is an industry that dominates the use in uh, almost all the sectors, be it styrene, be it, uh, be it polystyrene, be it polyvinyl chloride, be it polyethylene. We regularly use it in several applications. Uh, so straight away going to the manufacturing unit in a generalistic overview. Uh, so basically in the reactor itself, uh, uh, the monomer, the co-monomer and the catalyst and solution is paired. If it is a solution polymerization, if it is not a solution polymerization then only the catalyst monomer and the co-monomer is fed and the recycle stream definitely uh, with the recovered monomer uh, being fed into the reactor here. So what is exactly happening? We have a video on bulk polymerization versus solution polymerization so please refer to that video if you haven't to understand the difference between a solution polymerization and a bulk polymerization where only the monomer is present and the catalyst is present and no other solution is present. Whereas in solution polymer, the polymer uh, and the monomer is borne by a solution in itself which basically carries away the heat of polymerization and undergoes the uh, reaction smoothly maintaining the fluidity of the polymer mixture and uh, thus the entire procedure becomes a little lucid in terms of solution polymerization. Now we are to specifically talk about what is co-monomer and why is it at all required in polymerization. So the function of co-monomer is basically to form linked polymers, cross-linked polymers. Supposedly, I am manufacturing a high density polyethylene. So I know polyethylene structure is CH2, CH2, N. That is N bonding, CH2, 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 and like this, the bonding will keep on continuing uh, till the very end to form a polymer chain. Now, supposedly, I want to create some branching out here. I want to create some branching. I want to take out one uh, H, and I want to create some side chains, some side branches from the carbon chiral centers. And uh, why this is particularly done, why it is required uh, to inculcate to infuse some desirable properties in polymer. You must have heard about the term of plasticizers. Now, uh, let us talk about plasticizers. What are plasticizers? Plasticizers are basically the materials that inculcate a property of flexibility in the particular polymer. You must have heard about UPVC. What is UPVC? Unplasticized polyvinyl chloride. Unplasticized polyvinyl chloride is a solid like structure which has no flexibility because they don't have any plasticizer attached with it. Whereas if it is a plasticized polyvinyl chloride that we use in wires, it is flexible. So you can actually uh, turn it or uh, like uh, it is a malleable in structure. You can actually give it the shape you desire it to be. Whereas in unplasticized uh, polymers, you generally cannot get the property, you do not get the property of flexibility associated with it. So it is a straight polymer and it is a hard polymer which is not flexible and it cannot bend it. So same polyvinyl chloride is available in the form of plasticized polyvinyl chloride and unplasticized polyvinyl chloride in terms of pipes, the pipelines that we see of PVC are unplasticized so UPVC uh, that is unplasticized polyvinyl chloride. Whereas the wires, the uh, polyvinyl chloride coating on the wires are flexible and hence pol uh, Polymerization is undergone in the presence of a co-monomer which mm, undergoes some cross-linked polymer formation, some cross-linked polymer formation which gives flexibility. 
So this cross-link polymerization is basically inculcating a property of flexibility. Now, what are the spoon monomers? Supposedly, in case of HDP, the unit I was associated with high-density polyethylene. Often, we need the uh, plasticizer associated with it. And the, to, to get the property of plasticization, we add the co-monomer of propylene along with ethylene. So, uh, monomer is ethylene which forms polyethylene and we, uh, along with it we add propylene which forms cross-chained or cross-linked polymers that adds on an additional flexibility in the polymer itself by reducing its density to some extent. So basically a cross-linked polymerization occurs and the flexibility is uh, infused in the structure due to the presence of co-monomer. If we need plasticizing property to an extent we add this co-monomer to the desirable quantity. Now what is my catalyst? The catalyst will be the one that promotes the reaction and undergoes it at a very low activation energy that is it reduces the temperature of the pressure requirement in the particular reactor chamber for HDP the groundbreaking polymer uh, catalyst for this polymerization reaction of for formation of high density polyethylene was the Ziegler Natta catalyst named after the scientist Ziegler and Natta uh, that uh, found this particular catalyst of aluminium and uh, titanium chloride TiCl3 uh, so basically this the catalyst is specific for HDP and several manufacturing procedures have their own catalyst structures. And the manufacturing of HDP in particular is solution polymerization. Once again, if it is not a solution polymerization, it will be a bulk polymerization in the case of which the solution will not be present there. Only the monomer and the co-monomer and the catalyst will be fed in the reaction. Now, in case of HDP in particular, high density polyethylene manufacturing, the solution is hexane. The solution is hexane. Now this solution is selectively used by seeing the boiling point of the particular solution. Why the, how this solution is chosen and why this solution is chosen is de discussed in detail in the video of bulk polymerization versus solution polymerization. How the solution is chosen. Please refer to that video. So from the reactor itself we now know that the polymer will be formed. Polymerization reaction is taking place. So polyethylene will be coming out or polyvinyl chloride will be coming out. And the monomer, unreacted monomer will be there, unreacted monomer, fair enough, some amount of catalyst will be born along with the uh, uh, polymer and some amount of solution will also be present. So polymer is present, uh, some unreacted monomer or co-monomer might be present, some catalyst will be present and some solution will be present. Now next up we go into a flash evaporator, very important my friends, after the reactor we go into a flash evaporator generally in the system of polymer manufacturing. What does this flash evaporator do? Flash evaporator flashes it, that is throttles the valve and maintains a low pressure condition. Pressure in the flash evaporator is kept low and as we know as the pressure decreases the boiling point of the solution decreases and hence this hexane or whatever solution we are using will obviously take off uh, as gaseous product and also some unreacted monomer since the monomer is ethylene which is which has a primary tendency to remain as a gas or as in the vapor state or gaseous state it will always have a tendency to fly off along with the solution forming vapors so solution will form vapors and the unreacted monomers will also get separated in the flash evaporator where the pressure is suddenly decreased such that the liquid under low pressure converts into gaseous state whereas a polymer being a primary solid will tend to re retain in the flash evaporator and will move into the next chamber which is by stripping unit or by stripper, steam stripper in particular. In general industrial practices in polymer manufacturing, steam stripping is being used. So after the flash evaporator, since the unreacted monomer, the unreacted co-monomer and the solution has been primarily separated but it needs further separation if some remaining amount of solution is present or if some remaining amount of unreacted monomer is entrapped within the polymer structure which is always a possibility after the flash evaporator it needs to be extracted out and what better than giving a stripper a steam stripper because steam steam has no unreacted monomer gas has no solution within itself it is pure water so pure steam basically undergoes uh, a stripping action on this particular um, uh, solid and hence separates out the entrapped gas because steam uh, has no particular gas no particular unreacted monomer or no particular hexane solution uh, present in it so it always has a tendency it always has a mass transfer driving force for this um, solid plus gas 
this gas tries to escape into the incoming steam which is trying to fly off along with the gas so exiting will be steam plus gas what gas is this unreacted monomer and uh, solution vapor uh, primarily formed because the steam has a mass transfer driving force and the steam being pure carries along with itself the gas which is entrapped in the solid the remaining is primarily solid with some water that has condensed in the process of steam stripping so now my problem is not unreacted monomer or not the solution it's itself traces of the solution might be present traces of the unreacted monomer might be present but primarily the problem is now water we cannot have polymer associated with water because then we cannot market it in terms of pellets or in terms of powder as form so what we do is we have to separate the water we have to dry out the water from the polymer itself so we take it into a drying section this entire section is known as a drying section this section is known as a drying section wherein the water separation is being done how the water separation is being done so the solid plus water is sent into an ultra centrifuge or a centrifuge in itself and as we know the centrifugal force in action is basically churning the entire mixture and the uh, water having a lesser viscosity than the polymer itself uh, basically tends to move out or uh, go out in the periphery and exits out to the filter holes of this ultra centrifuge whereas whereas the solid primarily the solid is retained uh, in the bottoms uh, of the centrifuge or the center of the centrifuge and the periphery collects the water this water further is collected from the system along with this steam plus gas mixture and is put into a condensing unit a condenser wherein the water condenses uh, into the steam condenses into uh, liquid form from the gaseous form and basically no water is remaining after the condenser and pure recycled monomer gas monomer unreacted monomer which is mixed with the flash evaporator steam so three sources of the unreacted monomer till now we have seen flash evaporator in itself the first step of separation the second step of separation is the stripping column steam stripping column and the third step of separation is the centrifuge we separate the water out of the uh, three by using a condenser and we use the monomer gas and the solution vapor and recycle it back into the system as we can clearly see into the reactor now the solid that is retained after the centrifuge is sent into a dryer to further dry any remaining amount of liquid solution or any remaining amount of water that was entrained with the solid uh, from the centrifuge that has uh, exited from the centrifuge so some amount of liquid is still existing along with the solid polymer so this liquid is separated in a dryer now the function of the dryer is again stripping action what does it do it we, if we give pure nitrogen as in the case of hdp or pure um, substance that can actually take out the water what we were doing here we were giving steam to take out the monomer gas and the solution but we cannot give steam here because already steam is what we have to strip out of the system so we need to give another gas which doesn't have any amount of steam or water in itself so that that gas can strip the steam or strip the water out of the solid so basically we give nitrogen which is an inert gas and doesn't react with the polymer inert gas easily available so this nitrogen is sent into the dryer and it is a counter current dryer wherein uh, the nitrogen comes in contact with the rotating dryer of the solid polymer plus the liquid coming in a counter current direction the liquid uh, primarily containing water and secondarily containing some uh, minor amount of hexane solution maybe which was used in the solution in the first step and some amount of co-monomer with itself will be taken out by the purging gas purged purged N2 plus H2O plus unreacted monomer plus solution in itself plus solution excel solution in case of solution polymerization will be again moved into the system will move into the condenser and will uh, separate out the water in the form of liquid and will be refed into the recycle stream the monomer gas the solution vapor uh, uh, primarily and the nitrogen in itself the nitrogen will enjoy a free, free ride in the reactor and will not affect the system there is always a nitrogen purging system that will remove the nitrogen continuously from the system now we see after this 
dryer. The solids that remain primarily, the solids that remain primarily are solids only without water, without unreacted monomer gas, without solution hexane, and uh, uh, without any entrained liquid along with it. Uh, purely solid in powderous form is then mixed with a stabilizer. What does the stabilizer do? The polymers in the industry after manufacturing are stored up in silos, backed up in uh, plastic bags and are further sent uh, to the customers for their end use. In the process, they get exposed to oxygen a lot. And we know that uh, this oxygen can actually degrade the quality of the polymer that is being manufactured. So we need to add some stabilizer that will coat the polymer with such a substance such that it doesn't react or oxidize with the air contact. So we need to add stabilizers along with, along with polymer. So first action is stabilization and the other action is pelletization. An entire building of seven story, seven story building you won't believe was there in Haldia Petrochemicals for the stabilization and pelletization purpose only, an entire building. So pelletization is done in steps. Finally, the molten, uh, the powder is molted under hot conditions and the molted metal, metal used to come out of this shapes and used to be cut using a cutter to form small beads so basically a molten form of metal uh, uh, for polymer constantly coming out and the cutters cutting it into beads and pieces and is finally stored inside of polymer. So basically stabilizers are added to prevent oxidization and pelletization is done to provide beads so that they can be backed up and uh, transferred to the customers in forms of uh, small solid polymer beads. In the entire process we see that once again let us revise what we do we enter the reactor we have understood the use of co-monomers we feed the monomer we feed the co-monomer we feed the solution we feed the catalyst uh, some unreacted monomer primarily the polymer uh, some catalyst may be entered along with the solution which is entered into the flash evaporator where we decrease the pressure so that the recycle uh, the uh, unreacted monomer gas and the solution forms vapor and returns back to the system the further separation is undergone by steam stripping then the solid has some water because of the steam stripping the solid entrails some water with itself it is further separated in a centrifuge and then in a dryer all of these separation processes ultimately result in uh, water unreacted monomer gas and solution and some catalyst which is further recycled into the system after condensing the water because the water will prevent the reaction in the reactor bed itself. Uh, after the dryer it is sent to the stabilizer and pelletization unit where these stabilizers are added and pelletization in the form of pellets or beads of polymer is done and finally it is marketed in the market to consumers. So this is the entire polymer manufacturing unit. Now to different polymers, different types of methods are followed. Some bulk polymerization methods are followed. Some solution polymerization methods are followed. Somewhere steam stripping may not be present. Somewhere extra step of drying may be present. So these type of methods do vary, but the overall structure of polymer manufacturing remains the same. I hope you have understood. If you have, then share our uh, uh, content, subscribe to our channel, uh, share it with your friends. Thank you very much.